Today I'm going to talk about the mysterious init.py file and what it is used for. In short, it is used to make directories appear as libraries. That way I can import them and all of the things within them with simpler commands. So in this resources folder, I have two objects that I've created. Object one is just a class called one that will print out object one once it's instantiated and object two is the same thing, just printing object two. And let's say I want to use those two objects in the other directory or outside directory in tutorial.py. So let's just see what happens if I try to import resources. So I'll say Python re tutorial.py. And what we can see is this actually runs with no problems. So Python has no problem importing a directory, but let's see what happens when I try to actually access one of the objects. So let's say O equals resources dot object one dot one. So I'm saying that this is the directory. Here is the file housing the class, and this is the class. If we remember over here, we have resources object one and then the class one. Now what happens if we run this? We get an error that the module resources has no attribute object one. So even though Python has imported the resources directory, it's not noticing any of these Python files within it. So what I actually have to do is clear this out and say from resources dot object one import one. Now this is saying from, which is specifying the directory and the file, I am telling it to import from that file this class. So now when I run it, we have no problem. We have imported object one. And then for object two, I have to do the same thing. From resources dot object two import two. And I could say t equals two. We'll run this and we get object one, object two. So if you just want to import things from subdirectories, this is how you have to do it. You have to say from path to the object file, the file itself, then you have to tell it to import the particular thing you want from that file. And this becomes tedious if you have multiple files from which you want to import from, and also multiple objects you want to import from that file. So what we can do is create an init.py file to take care of some of this for us. So I'm going to come back to my command line, and I'm going to use the touch command to create this file. And I'll say resources slash underscore underscore init.py. Now what I can do is clear all of this out, and I can simply import resources. Now just like the init function in a class over here, which runs automatically as soon as the class is instantiated, the init.py file runs automatically as soon as a library is imported. So as soon as I say import resources, it looks for and runs this init.py file. But at the moment, init.py is blank. And what we want is for our resources library to automatically have access to object one and object two. So I'm going to, in this init file, say from resources.object1 import one. And then from resources.object2 import two. So what's going to happen is when I run this file, it will import resources, which is automatically going to run init.py. And init.py is going to import the one and two objects itself. So when I come back here, I can actually reference resources.1 and resources.2. So if I run this, we can see object one and object two. So by creating this init.py file and populating it with these import statements, I can turn a set of individual files into one library called resources. 
Without init.py, I will have to import everything one by one in these import statements. But with it, I can simplify the process and make it repeatable. So we can imagine these object1 and object2 classes being much more useful than they are and much more generic, such that I might want to import them into other projects. By having this init.py file, I am able to simply copy and paste my resources directory wherever I want, and I'll have access to all the same functionalities simply by saying import resources. So the init.py file is used to make a directory into a library by automatically running this file when you import the directory. And in this file, you will specify all the things you want in the library that exist in the directory. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.